Hello, thank you so much for tuning into my YouTube channel. In today's video, I want to talk about deep image prior and how it could be applied to image denoising. Deep image prior, even though it's an unsupervised model, uh, it could even do better image denoising compared to so many supervised models. Let's get started and see how it could be applied to image denoising. Okay, let's talk about image denoising using deep image prior. Deep learning approaches train a single network using a large set of images. However, using deep image prior, we can train a network per image to generate images prior. A prior is an underlying assumption we have about the world. For example, we assume a coin to be fair, 50% heads and 50% tails. That's our prior. This prior is not always true, but most of the time it is. Similarly, we assume natural images to be noise and holds free. Thus, a deep image prior is usually used for denoising and in painting applications. Opposite to the common belief that supervised learning is necessary for building good image priors, deep image prior, which uses the generator network architecture, captures a great deal of image statistics only through one image. Here's an example here that a deep image prior was used to denoise an image. And the left image, which is the noisy image, is the only image that the network has used to get to the right image. In a nutshell, given a noisy image X, a convolutional neural network, usually a unit which, which has upsampling and downsampling blocks along with skip connections and so on, like encoder-decoder architecture, is optimized using gradient descent to generate the prior of the noisy image, which is a denoised version of X. And the denoised version of X is shown as X star. As you can see, the output of this network X star is the denoised version of X, which is the noisy image. The input to the neural network is a random fixed 3D tensor called Z, which is of the same spatial dimension as X. So you gotta be careful. Even though X is the noisy image, but the input to the network is actually called Z, and it's a random tensor whose size is exactly the same as X. So this is the architecture that downsampling, upsampling, skip connections, and all sorts of convolution. Also, as you can see, we are, we're using leaky ReLU activation function instead of ReLU. The reason is when the input to ReLU is negative, the learning process is going to be all blocked. But when you use leaky ReLU, even though the input is negative, the learning process is not going to be blocked. And the last activation function in the last layer is sigmoid activation function. The weights of the networks that I just showed you are optimized using gradient descent to minimize the following loss function where x is the noisy image and x star is the generated denoised image, the prior. When training a neural network, we tend to seek a global minimum. It should be noted that the global minimum for this case, for this loss function shown here, means regenerating a noisy image. In other words, when L is 0, X star is X. This is expected due to the neural network's huge overfitting capability. To avoid this global minimum, we should terminate the optimization process early. It is argued that before reaching the global minimum solution, the generated image X star will either converge to a good looking local optimum or at least the optimization trajectory passes near 1. So the X, which is the noisy image, is not going to be input to the network. Instead, Z is going to be input to the network. But then the optimization process, the loss function, is going to be calculated using X and the output of the network. And naturally, the prior of this solution is the denoised version of the X. But we have to have an early stopping. This argument raises a critical question. When to terminate or what is the termination criterion? An easy way is early stopping that is adapted by many papers which might not be the most concrete solution. There are more sophisticated ways such as generating the prior using SGD which stands for stochastic gradient descent but injecting Gaussian noise in the gradient while employing weight decay which we are not going to cover in this video. This figure shows the impact of the number of optimization iterations on the generated image prior X star. 
it shows how a nice looking local optimum is reached after 2500 iterations before the network overfits the corrupted image. One of the advantage of this idea is that no labels are required. It is kind of unsupervised learning approach that outperforms its supervised alternative as well. As you can see here, this is supervised and this is deep image prior and deep image prior has even done better than the supervised. But at the same time, deep image prior does not require as much data for training as much as the supervised learning needs. In this video, I am planning to code up a deep image prior in Keras on TensorFlow. This deep image prior is intended for image denoising shown as follows. So this is the noisy image that we're gonna have denoised using deep image prior. Let's go to Python and have a quick look at the coding and also get some run. So here's the coding part. First we check to see if we have any GPU on the system, which I have, and then we simulate the noisy image and we show them. We show all the images here before training the network. And these are the inputs to the to the network where X0 is the noisy image, X true is the ground truth image with no noise imparted to it. And F is the random 3D tensor that is input to the image. X0 is called input but in reality X0 is used to compute the loss function and F is the input to the network. But because X0 is the, in, is the only information that the network has, sometimes it is referred to also as input. So this is where Z is randomly made and uh, the ZSTD stands for the standard deviation that is used to generate Z. And this is loss function which is calculated between X0 and XX is the intermediate output from the network. So when the Z is input to the network, in each iteration there is an output and X is that output and the loss function between X and X0 which is the noisy image is calculated. We're going to ignore everything else because it's not related to this video. And we are using also Atom Optimizer and we compile the network here and in each iteration we predict the X and we calculate the loss function as shown. We show the output all here. We set up where to show and then we show them here. All the outputs, the best output and also the last output. And this is for avoiding overfit, which I'm not going to cover here as I said. I don't want to make the video too complicated. Deep image prior is very simple and I'm going to add this in a later video. This is where the best output is saved. And this is where the architecture of the network is put together. 128 is the number of filters in each layer and the size of kernels are 3. And the layers are put together here. Input, down sampling layers, up sampling layers and then the last convolution which has only 3 filters. The last convolution which is the number of channels in an RGB image. Hence only 3 filters in the last convolutional layer. And this is where I showed the model and uh, as you can see here also is uh, where we, we input the image and then we make the noisy image. And this is where the architecture of the network is made and this is the main line that, uh, that makes the deep image prior work and I'm going to put 2000 iterations here. Okay, let's run and see what happens. The number of available GPU 1 and now it's gonna start running. It has about 2000 iterations. Let's see what happens. Okay, the run is complete and this is what we've got after 2000 iterations. And as you can see this is the ground truth and this is the noisy image and this is what we've got after 2000 iterations and it's not as good as the ground truth but it's not bad considering that we only use 2000 iterations and for the purpose of this tutorial I'm gonna say that's good enough and uh, I'm sure if we use a higher number of iterations we get to a better result and we could replicate this uh, original ground truth better yeah and that's about it Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you were able to get something out of this video. If you liked it, I would appreciate if you would subscribe to my channel and even share it with your friends. Thank you so much and have a nice day.